Human life is very short. You come, you are an innocent baby, unable to control anything of your physical environment. And then you develop, you become a youth, then a person of the middle years, dynamic, attempting to find your place in the world and express yourself. And then you enter a period where you have made your place in the world for good or ill, and you have become whatever you are to be in this life. And then the physical body begins to age and decline. And a period of life comes when there is time for reflection, assessment, and then the final years and the passage from this life. Naturally, for some, this period is longer, for some, much shorter. For some, not all of these stages will come about. But this life is short. You come with a set of beliefs, understanding, sanskaras, reactions from actions of the past, then that is built upon. And together with the experiences of this life forms the direction and motion of your current experience. There are certain fundamental passages, truths that are there for all. You come into this life and depending on your reactive momentum of mind, it may go this way or that. But it is certain that you will be involved in the physical form and the mind in attempting to secure your well-being and the well-being of those you love, and fearing and avoiding pain, loss, and sorrow. This aversion and attraction are the two primary forces of human life that pull you and push you through the experience of your humanity. Ultimately, the fear of death, the fear of loss arises. But beneath all of these human experiences, lies the fundamental cause of suffering, which is identity of self with the individuality of your I feeling. When you are able to move into the deeper self, the self of yourself, and feel the ocean of divine grace that is unlimited and omniscient. Then comes the experience of a loss of need to cling and to acquire 
a loss of need to fear. For in this deeper self of yourself, in this ocean of infinite grace, there is no coming and no going, <laughs> no loss, no separation. For all is the eternal one. All abides in the infinite ocean of being. There is no self and other. That is a misunderstanding, a, an illusion created by identity of conscious being, of conscious awareness with the body, mind, and senses. Because consciousness experiences a body senses, and mental function, it perceives sensory experience. So there is self and other. Due to this identity with incarnation. But when the identity moves to the deeper nature, to the self of yourself, then you begin to experience the wholeness that is your real truth, that is the substantive truth that lies beneath the experience of gain and loss, of pleasure, and pain. Beneath this, there is a knowledge of wholeness in which there is no loss and there is no gain, where love divine is the language of being, the language of the heart. There is no subject, no object. There is only love. And all the forms of this creation, when seen through the eyes of the deeper self, of the divine essence within you, all of creation is but the multitude of forms of infinite being, the multitude of forms that divinity takes in the play of creation. In all the forms, in all the ways, there is but the one, eternal, immortal, infinite self. That divinity which has no duality, no separation, the dissolving of I and thou into this ocean of infinite grace is the greatest achievement of human life, for it dissolves all of the misunderstandings, all of the illusions that have caused suffering dissolve in this knowledge, in this experience of the infinite love of the divine. This God self is the ocean of infinity the immortal self of all beings in which all of the forms of creation abide. Form comes and goes. 
human life is short. But this human life is precious, for it is your opportunity to sink deep within to the eternal essence of being, to the love that knows no second, to the knowledge of all forms as but the plays and colors in the mind of the one. When this deep knowledge arises, viveka, it dispels ignorance. This is a knowledge not of the intellect, but of the heart. It is a knowledge of truth a truth that is deeper than anything of form. For all forms are the essence, the expression of this essence. All leads to the one. For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, the chirping of the bird, the babbling of the brook, the leaf falling from the tree speak the essence of eternal being for the infinite lies in all forms in the eyes of those you love. In the changings of the seasons, in the rain, in the snow, in the sunlight, the infinite abides. And beyond all forms, beyond all images, the one eternal self, the one eternal nature, the love that is and always has been, abides. It is your own deep nature, like the drop of water dropped into the sea when the thoughts of duality fade from the mind. Conscious awareness falls back to its inherent nature. The love that always is, always has been, always will be. Beyond time, beyond space, beyond form. This eternal river of cosmic existence abides. In it, you abide. Simply let go. Let go of ideas. Let go of beliefs. Oh, I cannot do that because I am not elevated enough. I am not high enough. I am not great enough. Let go. Simply let go. In that letting go, 
of all your beliefs, your ideas, fall into grace. Fall into love eternal. Dissolve into the beloved of your heart, into the core of your being. Dissolve into that which you love most deeply. The love in your heart is a gateway, a doorway to the infinite one. For the nature of the infinite is love unbound. There is an inherent longing for union, for the fulfillment of being for the dissolution of separation. It is an inherent longing. It is Bhagavad Dharma. Do you feel it? The longing, the need to be whole, to just let go, unburden yourself. Put it all in the hands of the Infinite One. Let your heart be one with the heart of the Infinite One, with the Deep Beloved. Let that one take all that you have held, all that you have believed, all that you have understood to be you. Let it go. Let the grace of infinite being, of that most precious one, shower upon you. Take down the umbrella of ego. Let it go. Let it be his. Let it belong to that one. You belong to that one. Take down your walls, your fears, your defenses. Let love eternal the infinite whole, be your home of homes. The true sadhana is not in achieving some grand discipline, but rather giving away all that you have acquired. to the hands and arms of the Infinite One. Not giving away this mere physical possessions, but giving away all of the assumptions, the beliefs, the most precious problems of your life that you have held dear to your heart the most precious beliefs in your own inadequacy, the most precious beliefs in your uniqueness, your specialness. Let it go. 
let it go. This is the sadhana. <clears throat> Surrender everything. And let the infinite one abide in the form that you have called you. Let the infinite one abide in the mind that you have thought you possess. Let the infinite one be a shower of grace so that your eyes are open and all you see is the one in all the colors and forms of creation. Nothing is lost, nothing gained. All is the play of the infinite, the dance within the mind of the one. Be the dancer. Shed all that you have held. What remains what remains hmm? love divine has no boundaries though it can take any form and all forms. It is beyond form. Love divine has no name, no fame. No prestige to defend. It abides in all things, in all beings. Though all appears to change in the forms and colors, the changing seasons of life, the infinite remains ever unchanged, unbound. Remove the bindings, let them fall away. They are the dream. Fall back into the infinite, into the love that never changes, into the self that always is. One eternal, immortal essence. The home from which you have come. Return again. All right.